Good morning to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the 26th of July, 2017. Taking a look at the tropics, the Pacific is the basin that is the most active still, with a couple of hurricanes here in the eastern Pacific, typhoon over here in the northwest Pacific, and a new tropical storm forming not far from the Philippines. This gives you a pretty good perspective of the active area of the Indian Ocean. Nothing going on there, and really nothing in the Atlantic, although there is a new area outlined just off the coast of Africa. We can take a look at that right here. The 8 a.m. tropical weather outlook highlighting this. 20% chance of development over the next five days, and the text product there says development of this system, if any, will be slow to occur. It is still just a little too early. The watched pot that we are all watching and waiting to see when it boils. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I mean, you know there's going to be a hurricane or several at some point in the Atlantic Basin. It's not like we're in an El Nino year and the Atlantic is cooler and all that other stuff. But when you see this, you can just tell just by this satellite picture, the very strong high pressure dominates the Atlantic right now. The intertropical convergent zone squashed fairly far to the south. Nevertheless, there is a little bit of energy here that bears watching over the next few days. Some convective activity may be heading towards the Windward Islands here, but it's just your average ITCZ thunderstorm activity. But keep that in mind if you're heading out in small craft or you're out on the beaches down there of Barbados and points south towards Trinidad and Tobago. Over the next 24 hours, some of this convective activity might move through, but it is not in any way related to uh, the potential development of a storm or anything like that. Looking at the larger, wider shot here, I like this perspective a lot myself. Uh, you can see for the most part not a lot of convection over Africa as the suppressed MJO and the suppressed what we call Kelvin wave. You know, basically you can just put a big giant X across this area that it is not favorable right now for the most part. Even though we do have this energy here, it bears watching. It's still happening in sort of the wrong period of time. And um, it's like trying to go to the beach during the winter. You know, you get everything set up and you go down to the beach and you're like, whoops, it's still winter. It just doesn't make sense. And you have to try again in a few months when it's summertime. That's the analogy you get for early in the morning. Uh, but again, a look at the intertropical convergence zone and a little bit of convection headed towards the Windward Islands. Other than that, the Atlantic Basin probably going to remain very quiet for the next several days, as expected. In the Pacific, I want to take a look at what's going on out here. Again, the leftovers of whatever uh, we have from Fernanda, and I believe this is what's left over of Greg, not doing too well. And then this is Irwin here and Hurricane Hillary here, and these two, again, are probably going to do this sort of Fujiwara swirling around each other kind of deal. Uh, I don't think much moisture is going to make it into Southern California from this system, but we'll keep watching just to, just to see. You never know. You have sort of this pseudo-monsoonal action going on out in the Southwest as it is, just the way the seasonal pattern shapes up in July and into parts of August. And once you get into late August into September and you start bringing the possibility of fronts, not necessarily fronts, but these troughs that dig in out west and erode this ridge uh, of high pressure, there becomes an alleyway that will open up perhaps for some of these systems to maybe affect the Baja. But so far, so good. No problems. Looking at the global shot here, again, uh, the hemispheric shot showing the western Pacific and a couple things to point out, this new tropical storm forming near the Philippines and then a, a system up here. Um, let's go over here and see if we can see what that name is. Mouse over that. Kulap, something like that. Maybe affecting Taiwan several days down the road. We'll have to wait and see if that is indeed the case, but it just shows you that overall the rising motion is set up over the Pacific right now and that'll be sliding eastward over time, eventually working its way into the Atlantic Basin. But no major typhoon activity, no super typhoons, nothing in the news-making category just yet. 
And so that certainly is good news for our folks and the uh, our folks, <laughs> our friends and folks in the West Pack. Um, had a question yesterday from one of the YouTube comments about the water temperatures in the Bay of Fundy. And if you don't know where the Bay of Fundy is, that would be right up here. And the way it's sandwiched in there, kind of pinched off geographic and geologically speaking, you get some pretty impressive tides up there from time to time. And let's get in here. I want to zoom in on this. If it'll let me. There we go. So the water temperatures up here, uh, these are in degrees Celsius. And so this is your 18 degrees Celsius isotherm right here, I do believe. And then this is 16 degrees Celsius. And so we're talking about water temperatures in the 50s Fahrenheit. And um, so it's still pretty cold up there. But that being said, look at the anomaly, the departure from normal for the Bay of Fundy, uh, for the person that had that question. Water temperature anomalies up here. Let's see, it looks like almost two and a half degrees Celsius because there's one degree Celsius above average right there. And then I think this is the two degree Celsius isotherm. In fact, you can see there's a little two hidden right there. So between one and a half to two degrees Celsius in the Bay of Fundy above average. So we're talking several degrees Fahrenheit above the long-term norm for that region. Uh, so there you go. You know, water temperature is a little too cold for me. But definitely, if you look at the wider shot up here, uh, these water temperatures in the northwest Atlantic, including the Bay of Fundy, warmer than average. So we'll see if that makes a difference once we get into the heart of the season. As you well know, sometimes you get these long track hurricanes and they come around the Bermuda High and they can come up and run over uh, the Canadian Maritimes into Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And with these warmer than normal temperatures up here, that is something to keep an eye on because it might mean that they last a little longer and the warmer than normal waters can add additional precip. And, you know, you just have to see if we have anything to take advantage of that. All right, so fairly short today, nothing major to talk about, but uh, an update nonetheless. All right, so we're watching to see if the pattern indeed, indeed evolves. Man, I can't talk today. It's too early. Uh, over the next several days, as some of the modeling is indicating, in fact, a lot of the models are, uh, or not. You know, as I commented in a retort to a YouTube comment, that just because something is forecast to happen by the models, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, doesn't mean that it has to happen. You know, it might, you know, supposed to, but it doesn't mean that it will. Uh, but really, the signs, as we talked about yesterday extensively, are definitely there. Um, so use this quiet time like I urged yesterday to get prepared. All right, well, that's it for me for today. Have a great rest of your, uh, what is it, Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. I don't even know. It's the 26th of July. That's what I know for sure. <laughs> and um, it's Wednesday, I know. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.